What are your best slash worst first day of school stories? I graduated college in 2009 and couldn't find a permanent job, so my mom got me a job working as a substitute teacher at my high school. I showed up for work on the first day on school in September 2009, and when I reported to the office to get my classroom assignment slash schedule the secretary asked me where my school ID was and what homeroom I was in. I tried to explain to her that I was there to work, but she didn't believe me and tried to send me to the principal's office for lying to her. TLDR got sent to the principal's office as a 22-year-old substitute teacher. First day of first grade, I just got some new Yu-Gi-Oh! cards and I'm enjoying them with a friend. Two kids walk up to me, and one of them asks to see my newest and most cherished card. He then takes it and runs away with the card. I chase him down, tackle him into a pile of gravel and bite his arm until he starts to bleed, and take my card back. He ends up getting in trouble for taking my card, and nobody believes him when he says I bit him. The next day his mom makes him give me half of his cards. We are now best friends. So a pretty good day for me, a pretty bad day for him. TLDR, attack the F out of my future best friend in first grade, got Yu-Gi-Oh! Cards. It was my first day of school at a school I had just transferred to. I was never allowed to walk home, so I had to wait for my mother to come pick me up. I waited for hours and nobody ever showed up. Since I wasn't allowed to walk anywhere, the faculty at all left the building, and didn't have a cell phone I had no way of contacting anyone or getting home. Turns out I was at the, the wrong exit. Both sides of the building have the same sort of entryway, and each entryway looks out onto a parking lot with a softball field behind it. They were exactly the same, except one lot is for seniors to park and the other is the faculty slash library parking. My mother went frantic and went to the police with a ton of photos of me. Eventually, I was found still sitting and waiting to be picked up at the back of the building. Unfortunately, this was not the last time she went to the police with photos. First day of school, 6th grade, mom decides to fix me some chocolate chip pancakes for breakfast, my favorite. The only problem is that I had irritable bowel syndrome as a child. So I eat the delicious pancakes and head to the bus stop. I arrive at school and get to my first class. My stomach has started to rumble but I just try to persevere and forget about it. The teacher decides she wants all of the students to come in front of the class one at a time and introduce themselves. My turn finally comes, and at this point my stomach feels like it is churning butter. I introduce myself to the class and as I try to walk back to my seat all hell breaks loose. With each step I take you would hear the most volatile and nightmare inducing sounds you would ever hear in your life. As I ran to the bathroom shit ran down my leg as a chocolate volcano would erupt. On the first day of kindergarten, we had an hour or so of nap time. My bed was next to the teacher's desk and I didn't want to disturb anyone by going to the toilet so I thought I'd keep it in. Ended up having the nastiest shit of my life in my pants. The teacher smelt it, looked at me and knew immediately that a shit bomb had gone off. She asked if I had shat myself, and I don't know why I thought there was a way out, but I denied it. The teacher ended up washing my ass. My very first day of school, preschool, I didn't know English. I was born in the US, but my parents spoke to me nearly exclusively in Vietnamese. It started off with my mom dropped me off and me crying my head off because I didn't know she wasn't going to stay with me. Half the day through, the school had to call my mom to pick me back up because I had peed my pants. Apparently, I didn't know how to tell any of the teachers that I had to go to the bathroom, they didn't understand Vietnamese, so I just went in my pants. Actually, my first day of high school was today. I've heard horror stories, and I was terrified. I watched Degrassi, and I was quite shocked when nobody made fun of my flat chest, the skin condition on my arms, or the fact that I don't wear any makeup to cover my acne. I'm very introverted and socially awkward, but I was actually able to make a lot of new friends. Plus, since I take health and P.E. online during school, nobody gets to see me fail at doing a push-up. The seniors here don't bother anyone unless you sit at their tables in the courtyard. I even have a class that consists of 75% sophomores and seniors. They were actually nice to me during class, and they joked around with me. This is the first time since middle school that I felt secure and safe at school. My first day of kindergarten, there was another kid in class named Underway, so I was Underway J, and he was Underway D. People though that might freak me out, it totally didn't, and I remember he was crying on the first day, and I remember thinking, nothing to cry about, we get lunch at like 11, and then we get out at 2, and Transformers doesn't come until 2.30, so it's all good. Scene first night of college for me and a few people who I met earlier in the day. While walking around campus together, I strike up a conversation with someone who happens to be a brother at a local fraternity. Fast forward another hour, my fellow freshman friends and I are sitting around in a frat house kitchen when a brother brings out a bottle of vodka and a shot glass for each of us, about seven or eight. He fills all of them, holds one up, and says, to the new school year. I jump from my seat, grab a glass and hold it up. 
A feeling of awkwardness came when I looked to see every one of my fellow freshmen still sitting and individually explaining how they don't drink. So naturally, they left soon after and I stayed to drink heavily, at a party where I literally knew nobody. Fast forward another year, and the fellow freshmen are all my great friends, and the frat is full of douchebags. Except my drinking is still mostly done by myself since they still don't partake. Oh well. I tried to get into this one class, but they told me it was cancelled, so they put me in a feeder class I already took, it wasn't cancelled, it was moved to your guidance counselors. There was this kid in the class. Let's call him Brian. I wasn't sure if Brian was mentally challenged or what, but he had an aide who followed him everywhere. I didn't want to be the asshole who just assumed someone was mentally challenged without really knowing him, and asked banal questions like, what's your favorite food, so instead I assumed Brian was a genius. We had this game we played in class where we get to know each other's names by throwing a ball around. I throw the ball to you, you say scrub and puff. You throw the ball to Brian, he would say your name, or he was supposed to. Brian would throw the ball to you, you'd say Brian. That kind of thing. Back and forth. Gentle. The kid wasn't so gentle. He'd pelt the ball. At first, it was the more athletic kids who would catch it and then give a disbelieving look, but eventually the kid pelted a freshman girl in the face. We stopped playing after that. He never even said anyone else's name. Just, Brian. Then we had to partner up and interview each other. Everyone picked everyone else, so I met up with Brian. I asked him, what fascinates you? He said, happy. Go on. Grumpy. Ah, emotions. You have an interest in the neurocenters of the brain. Sleepy. It hit me. He was listing the seven dwarfs from Snow White. I started putting together my next question, but then his aide came up and said to me, keep it simple, hun, and said to Brian, what's your favorite food? He said panda Chinese food or some place I never heard of. He started giggling and clapping. I felt like an asshole. Brian was out of the class after three days. My first day of middle school and sixth grade started strong, ended, eh, not so well. The day had been going along fine and I was in my last class. NC history with Mrs. Hughes. I remember I started to feel like I was going to toss my cookies in class so I got up quickly and exited the room. This angered the teacher so she followed me out to the hall only to her dismay as she was the sole attendee of my vomit virtuoso in which I spewed the contents of my lunch all over the end bottom locker. The backsplash of the waterfall out of my mouth launched up and into the adjacent locker. The janitor wiped down the front of the locker but without the combo to the lock he was unable to open it and clean me inside. The freshly vomit christened locker sat there to fester for 25 to 30 minutes until the bell rang. Only for the poor girl to open her locker and be so overcome by the sight and stench of my aftermath that she two blue chunks in the hallway. Not a great way to start middle school. But I felt instantly better after throwing up. My first day was the worst. I had grown up homeschooled by my parents in Africa, and it was my first day in an American public high school. In my homeroom, I had to sit behind this fat kid who farted all the way through class, and the principal who announced me as a new student couldn't pronounce my name. It was so weird being viewed as untrustworthy by adults. I was constantly being yelled at by the teachers. I got berated for having a green pen, food in class, not sitting in my seat, and a teacher even denied me a lavatory pass when I just needed to use the bathroom. By lunch, I was so humiliated that I ended up eating my sandwich in a bathroom stall. From the second day on, however, S got real. First day of 11th grade I was taking the bus to school with my twin sister. As we wait for our bus in this corner crowded with other kids, freshmen and juniors mostly, my sister is talking to me when a pigeon decides to dump one right on her face and hair. She freezes, I feel bad but start laughing uncontrollably bringing attention to the girl with bird S on her face. When I was in high school, we had off-campus lunch. I was walking with my girlfriend after getting back from somewhere, drink in hand. Some black dude came and knocked it out of my hand. I followed him, and he took a shortcut through a courtyard. I beat the S out of him in a blind spot. Told him don't F with Whitey. My first day of college was pretty awkward. At the time, I was sharing a car with my family and used to drive barefoot, keeping my shoes in the car. So, the first day of college rolls around, I get in and drive down to school without thinking twice about it. I get within five minutes of campus and start to look around for my shoes. No dice. Now I start to freak out, it's the first day of college, and I don't have any shoes. I stop at a couple of gas stations near campus to see if they have anything at all I could put on my feet, but to no avail. I'm already pushing it time-wise to get there on time. I have to go to school with no shoes on. I get to campus, and the parking lot is full because it's the first goddamn day. I have to park in the overflow parking lot, which is just a grassy patch near the campus. 
and it had just been recently mowed to look all nice and shit. And the sprinklers had gone off. So I have to walk through the recently clipped wet grass with no shoes on. I look like some kind of goddamn hobbit. My feet are wet and covered in grass. I get to class a few minutes late, everyone sees I have no shoes. So fucking awkward. The teacher also, at this point, decides, you know what these kids need? A tour of the campus. So I've tried my best to get the wet grass off my feet without looking like some sort of forest lunatic. We wander around the campus for about 20 minutes, and the teacher decides to let us leave early. I race back to my car and get the hell out of there. TLDR, had to go to my first day of college with no shoes on. First day of third grade in a new school, military family, and at recess pretty much every guy in my class was playing Smear the Queer, it was third grade in Texas, we were not very PC. Normally when people played the queer would change every time he was tackled. However, for some reason they would all chase one kid, Aaron, tackle him and then let him up and then proceed to chase him again. I watched this happen at least five times before I decided it was bull s. When I saw Aaron running toward my location I thought it was time to stop it, I targeted one of the lead guys in the pack, stuck out my arm and clotheslined the crap out of him, Andy. Turns out Andy was asthmatic and slamming a forearm into the neck of someone who has asthma is kind of a bad thing. Andy goes down in a heap, wheezing for breath, I got sent to the principal and Andy had to go to the hospital. I did not get in any trouble, I did have to apologize to Andy, but nothing big, because Aaron explained what was going on. Also, it pretty much stopped anyone from picking on me since it was clear from day one I was willing to get physical if need be. I spent four years in that school district and Andy and Aaron ended up being my two best friends during that time. TLDR almost killed my future best friend, no regrets. I switched to a new school in the middle of third grade, and on the first day my mom walked my brother and me to our classes. When we walked in some girl practically shouted, EW what are they doing in our class? I have such a vivid memory of just how mortified and upset I was for a minute, but when my brother and mom left she said, oh it's the girl. Oh I want her to sit next to me. And that's how I became best friends with Chrissy. At least until later that year when she threw my backpack on the ground, I retaliated by throwing a rock at her foot, and she ran off crying. I thought I'd probably broken her foot and would go to jail for the rest of my life. We didn't hang out so much anymore after that. I accidentally hit my physics teacher my first day of college. Not a car on car collision, a car on small Indian man collision. Okay, I was 16 and had just gotten my license days ago. I barely passed the test and almost hit a woman riding a bike while taking it. I had driven less than 5 hours with my permit. So I won't lie, I was a terrible driver. I also get lost easily and didn't bother to go around campus familiarizing myself with the buildings. So really, I had no idea where I was going. I also woke up late that day and didn't want my teachers to think poorly of me for missing the first day of class, so I was in a hurry. I eventually find my way to campus and all the parking lots are full. Shit. There's a few more huge parking lots behind the building, so that's where I go. I found two empty spaces right across from each other, so I pull through one so I can face outward in the second one. Right as I'm pulling through it, a guy jumps out in front of me from the car beside space number two. I hit him. The first day of sophomore year I walked in like one minute early to a cross country meeting that was supposed to be held. There was the whole volleyball team sitting there. I thought it was going to be a disaster, me walking in on a mass of women I haven't seen in three months not knowing where I was. But then one of them said are you lost? Trying to make me look like an idiot, I replied with something along the lines of I think so. Then they laughed, the good kind of laugh. It sounds like I'm in denial, but you had to be there to understand. But to make it even better, the cross-country team walked in in unison behind me. Our cross-country team is extremely prestigious, we are the top team in our district and have the third fastest kid in Texas on it. First day of preschool my mom tried to leave me on my own by convincing me she just had to run to the grocery store and she would be right back. I knew better than that and started throwing a fit. The teachers tried to calm me down and encourage my mom to leave. One teacher lady sat down with me in her lap on the floor, and as she was convincing my mom that I would be fine, she's seen it before, blah blah blah, I pee my pants soaking her and me. I gotta go home early that day. The first day of school last year I had my first period class with a mentally unstable psychopath of a teacher. I also had to S really bad. He shows up late to every single class. I didn't know this, so I ended up sitting in agony and waiting for him to show up, but he was not coming. I ended up making a run for it and running downstairs to the restroom, the upstairs stalls have no doors, for some god awful reason, and shitting as quickly as possible so I could make it back up. After that, I ran back up and barely made it into the room and to my desk moments before the teacher walked in. He didn't notice my temporary absence, which probably saved my life. 
Throughout the day I kept needing to take emergency shit breaks in nearly every class. I tried unbuckling my belt, Catholic school, we have a uniform, and letting my belt hang out with my shirt untucked to relieve the pressure, but then I looked like I had the weirdest boner right then so I scrapped that plan and just toughed it out through the rest of the week as every day for a few days played out as a repeat of the first day. TLDR, ISH way too much and I'm anticipating a repeat incident. Well, my first day of pre-K wasn't exactly the best. My family and I had just moved to America three years before I entered pre-K, naturally. I wasn't too social because of the language barrier, so I only really talked to people in my family. My mom and my aunt dropped me off on the first day, and I start freaking out and crying because I thought that they were putting me up for adoption or something. When I saw the teacher, I was kicking and screaming at her so that she could bring my mother back. I cried and screamed so much that I didn't notice that my mom and aunt had already left, and that made me cry to the point where I was throwing up all over the place. The teacher had to pick me up and hover me over a trash can so that the puke would stop falling all over the floor. Needless to say, other kids were crying too, and my teacher had to take me to the nurse so that I could get new clothes. I think it was more of a bad day for the teacher than anyone. Not on my first day of my sophomore year, but on my third the door to the bathroom, I was in jam during lunch, so the hallways were empty. Lucky I had my phone with me so I just called the main office and causally asked them to send someone up to pry the door open out a few minutes later. Once claustrophobia started to set in, lo and behold the vice principal came and broke the door down via shoulder ramming. I darted out of there like a bat out of hell and of course the popular kids were there by now and said OMG somebody was in there. If the V.P wasn't there I would have said what I was thinking who the F do you think called it in. First day of third grade a fourth grader at my school brought a hollowed out grenade to school for show and tell. He had gotten it from his dad who had just returned from Iraq. Needless to say he didn't say that it couldn't explode. So we had the whole school evacuated into the church across the street for five hours. The school officials never told us what was wrong until we got back into the school. So for that time we had no idea what was going on. Most of the kids in my small town, including myself, went to the church every Sunday. Those of us who went to the church went to him and asked if he would pray with us. In the end we were sent home early and the grenade was blown up by the bomb squad from a few towns over. TLDR had a fake grenade brought to school that sent a lot of us into a mass prayer. First day of high school. I'm wearing that kick-ass sweater I just bought and I look fine. I woke up late though, didn't have time for much of a breakfast, and had to take my medicine on an empty stomach. I'm sitting in the front row of a random classroom, and all my teachers are in there, introducing themselves. They're all going to love me, I'm sitting in the front row after all. My new biology teacher asks us to get out our schedules, and as I look frantically look in my backpack, I realize I've left it at home. I raise my hand and inform her. She gives me a disappointed look while she tells me where to go so I can get a new one. I come back a few minutes later, with my schedule, and shame washes over my face as I retake my seat in the front row. I sit and listen until a horrible sensation overtakes me. My stomach hurts. Really, really badly. I'm convinced a little goblin woke up and is trying to tear its way out of my stomach, only all of its nails have been clipped off. I can't handle it. I don't know what my teachers are saying anymore and I'm trying as hard as I can not to scream. Only 10 more minutes until lunch though, I can handle it. No, no I can't. I can't even look at the teachers anymore, it hurts so much. I put my head on my desk, breathing in slowly, while I dig my nails into my scalp. They're all going to hate me now. I hold it out and finally, the bell rings. I'm on the fourth floor and I know the clinic is on the first floor, but I'm determined to make it. I make it down two flights of stairs and, no, I need to stop. The little gremlin is using full force, now digging its teeth into my already bruised stomach. I sit down on the stairwell as classmates pass me by, giving me odd stares. A different sensation now. The gremlin has stopped trying to get through my stomach and realized the only way is up. I'm going to hurl and I know it. I run into the nearest classroom, thankfully only a teacher is in. I'm clutching my stomach and looking around frantically for a trash can, but I can't find one. Where's your trash can? A horrified look washes over the young teacher's face. The bathroom is over there, and she gestures down the hall. I shake my head, there is no time for that. So she point behind the door, where I see the trash can. I sit next to it, waiting. It doesn't take long. I throw up, but I know that's not all. I wait longer. Kids come and go for the next 10 minutes, luckily in between my earls. Some I know, some are strangers, but all are staring at me quizzically. The teacher asks if I feel well enough to go to the nurse, and I shake my head no. So the teacher calls the nurse up so she can get me. I wait longer, and vomit a few more times until I know I'm done. After the last hurl I feel a lot better. The nurse is already on her way, so I have to wait. 
The nurse finally comes in. Oh no, she has a wheelchair with her. She wheels me down the busy hallway, but I try to embrace it. I'm feeling a whole lot better after all. So I wave and smile. We take an elevator down. The nurse asks me some questions. I go back up to class late, and soon the school day is over. I'm happy. I get to go back home and tell my parents about my adventure. I'm replaying the scenes of the day in my head while I stand waiting for the bus when a fiend comes up to me. Hey, did you notice your sweater was ripped? What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.